drug-related offenses is pathetic, tragic, and sad. We know that drug issues in Saudi attract the death penalty. That will be the eighth Nigerian to be executed for drugs in Saudi in the last few years. And we have 20, about 24, uh, on death row for drugs in Saudi. And we have about 12 that have been um, sentenced to various jail terms. Now, the, the issue with the drugs in Saudi is this. There are cases of syndicates who work with airlines who actually put the drugs in also in the bags of suspected drugs. So we've had cases where truly they didn't commit the offense. So what we appeal to Saudi to um, uh, make the, the trials fair, open, and ensure that justice is done. Even if you are going to die, you know that you died for an offense you committed. So while we appeal to Nigeria, especially going to Saudi Arabia, it's tough. Obey the laws of the land. Even Kula not is treated as a drug. Mm. So we continue to appeal to the Saudi authorities to um, uh, treat some of the cases with some form of leniency. Like I said, we have 20 on death row in Saudi. This is the eighth to be executed. And uh, we're hopeful that maybe uh, it will be possible to save the others. And there are some on various uh, uh, offenses in, in Saudi Arabia. So it's pathetic, it's tragic. And we continue to appeal to Nigerians to obey the laws of wherever you go to. But however, we expect the trials to be fair, open, and be sure that justice truly is done before somebody is sentenced to death. On the second case of the Nigerians who raided a road to change in Dubai, again, that is disgraceful and is an embarrassment to the country, to themselves and their families. And the names of the five of them who allegedly made a road to change, which was captured on mm -hmm. Tojuku, Leonard, Alice, Chile, Mika, Ndunag. These five Nigerians who allegedly committed this offense are a disgrace to this country and is an embarrassment. So if UAE decides to be hard on Nigerians, we're going to say they've been hard on us. But we continue to say that one bad apple should not spoil the whole bunch. Nigerians are hardworking, uh, intelligent, you know, Nigerians all over the world. So this few should not spoil the whole bunch because this has made waves all over the, uh, the, the UAE now. So again, these are the five, uh, five people. We're going to continue to name those who disgrace the country anywhere in the world. And we appeal to Nigerians to continue to be good ambassadors of this country wherever they find themselves. Are you likely going to write a protest letter in Saudi Arabia? We've been doing that. The Nigerian um, uh, Council in Saudi Arabia has actually been, in, um, uh, been talking to the Saudi authorities, but we, I think we need to take it to a higher level now. With 20 you know, on death row, this is the age to be killed. We have to engage the Saudi authorities more than we have done in the past as it relates to Nigerians on death row. We may be able to say one or two that we're not sure actually committed the crime. So while you know we know that there are drug issues in Saudi Arabia it has a death penalty, let's just ensure that we intervene properly on behalf of all our citizens to be sure that at least justice must be done. The connivance with some airlines. Yes. Um, we're also going to be uh, uh, in particular, and this is the fact, Ethiopian Airlines and Egyptian Airlines, there's always cases of when you get there, you see something in your bag. So it is now mandatory for these airlines, for all of you traveling, ensure that you do your bag uh, check, identify your bag before you board, and that has helped. So it's important that when you're going to Saudi Arabia, any of these airlines, identify your bag, know that this is yours. So we have many cases of you get to Saudi Arabia and they just knock on your door and say something was found in your bag. You know, so these airlines are mandatory to do baggage identification before you board some of these passengers. So the case of Saudi is particularly worrisome because maybe some of them really did not commit the crime. Um, the, the, the one, one Nigerian was freed, was freed not too long ago with the intervention of our mission in, um, in, in Jeddah, who it turned out that he actually did not carry the drugs. So the embassy fully intervened and he, he was freed. One again has a court case and the embassy is intervening on his behalf and hopefully he too will be free. The embassy, so that is the embassy monitoring the trials? Oh yes, absolutely. The embassy is monitoring the trials. However, you know, Saudi is a bit of a difficult place. They are not allowed to go to prison to see them. They were allowed, I think, once. So the embassy is continuously requesting to at least go to the prison and see the Nigerians on death row and those that are, have been sentenced to various offenses. So um, we need to engage more with the Saudi authorities and ensure that we do whatever we can for the citizens of Nigeria while we condemn 
drug trafficking in any ramification. Let's ensure that we get justice for every one of them. Now, the, the rate at which Nigerians are being killed in South Africa is alarming. Most times it's for judicial. And I know there have been a lot of interpretation. South Africa, you need to break it down. South Africa issue can be broken into two. We have xenophobic attacks, which just happened recently, and I think it affected more in Malawi. That is there. So, and I'm sure you heard the president of South Africa when he came in. It's an embarrassment to South Africa itself. It's not something they're happy about, and it says everything will be done to curb it. And a lot of awareness must be put in place. The second case, in the case of South Africa, Nigerians killing Nigerians. We're having Nigerians taking cult and drug wars to South Africa. You know, so now the last thing of a Nigerian was by a fellow Nigerian. So drug was, and they have the names of the various cult groups, and they are drug related. So you cannot take that to another man's country and expect that, and, do, and expect that, you know, they will not be angry with you. So again, for Nigerians killing Nigerians in South Africa, again, that is another disgraceful act. And the Nigerian community in South Africa must get involved. The faith-based organization, they know them, they live amongst them. You remember the one that happened in Jose de mm -hmm. no, it, that is still a fallout of that. So you need to bring the South African case down. And in the case of South Africa, four policemen have been charged for their involvement in killings of Nigerians. With the intervention of Mr. President, that has happened, you know. So xenophobic attacks need to be, South Africa needs to deal better with it. But for the case of Nigerians killing Nigerians, it's pathetic. Now, going and back to the Saudi issue, what's your office doing alongside the Hajj Commission as a way of educating our pilgrims to take good care of their bags to avoid somebody placing Well, them? since this law, you know, came into force, where you ensure that bandages are identified, it has reduced. The case I'm talking about happened, I think, between 2016 and 2017. So that's actually reduced. So it's important to identify your bag, know that you take responsibility for your luggage. And we'll be also working with the Hatch Commission, also talk to these airlines to ensure that this is done. Because we do not want an innocent, innocent person to be jailed for an offense he or she did not commit. Those we'll killed, are they mainly pilgrims? Uh, oh, those killed, mm -hmm. I can't tell, but at least they were in Saudi. Mm -hmm. uh, eventually, it, might, it depends, you can go to Saudi anytime. So, but everybody in Saudi is basically. Uh, uh, just um, two days ago. So the A's in what time frame? The A's in what time frame? Oh, over the last couple of years. Yes, you know. So this will be the eighth execution. And like I said, we have 20 on death row in recent years. I'll go to the names of the execution. No, I don't want to release the names of this one because, it's, uh, because of their families. Some don't even know. We are not even sure whether they truly fully committed. So I don't want to release the names of them, but I'll release the names of those in Dubai that were caught on camera. Mm -hmm. that, but like I said, there are 24 on death row, there are 12 that have been sentenced to various... I think this is... Sorry, 20. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.